Have you ever found yourself reminiscing about classic TV, shows that left an indelible mark on the golden age of television? The Phil Silvers Show, a timeless sitcom from 1955, undoubtedly falls into that category. Its charm lies not only in the era it represents, but also in its ability to evoke fond memories for those who experienced its comedic brilliance. Reflecting on this iconic series, one might ask, do you have a cherished memory associated with The Phil Silvers Show? These questions open a doorway to personal connections and shared experiences related to the show. Before we delve into your cherished memories, let's set the stage with some intriguing insights about The Phil Silvers Show. The series, led by the charismatic Phil Silvers, captivated audiences with its clever writing and hilarious performances. The show's unique premise centered around the scheming Sergeant Ernest G. Bilko and his exploits at Fort Baxter provided a comedic escape that resonated with viewers across the nation. Now, as you reflect on your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this classic sitcom, we invite you to share your stories and anecdotes in the comments below. Your recollections add depth to the collective appreciation of The Phil Silvers Show, creating a tapestry of nostalgia and laughter. So, what's your story? We would love to hear about the moments that made this show special for you. Share your memories and connect with fellow enthusiasts who hold The Phil Silvers Show close to their hearts. It's a celebration of the timeless joy that classic television brings. The Phil Silvers Show, known to many as Sergeant Bilko, originally carried the title Y'all Never Get Rich. The show, airing in the mid-1950s, had a surprising origin tied to a World War I marching song. The lyrics hinted at the challenges of military life with lines like, Y'all never get rich, you son of a gun. This phrase, with its humorous undertones, set the tone for the series, highlighting the comedic elements of military service. One interesting aspect of the show was the dynamic between Phil Silvers, who played Sergeant Bilko, and Paul Ford, who portrayed Colonel Hall. Ford's occasional forgetfulness with lines provided Silvers with room for improvisation, creating spontaneous and humorous scenes. Despite the laugh shared between them, both actors managed to stay in character, revealing a unique behind-the-scenes dynamic. However, the unexpected cancellation of the Phil Silvers show caught Silvers off guard. After five successful years on the air, the decision was made without consulting him. Silvers expressed his surprise, hurt, and pride destruction, revealing that he had wanted to retire from the show on his own terms. Despite the disappointment, Silvers owned half the show and eventually relinquished it for a substantial sum, securing a financial future for his children. In retrospect, The Phil Silvers Show stands as a classic sitcom that not only entertained audiences with its military humor, but also showcased the unexpected challenges faced by its creators. From the show's original title inspired by a world war, I song to the spontaneous improvisations on set, and the surprising cancellation that left its star disappointed, the series remains a noteworthy chapter in television history. Despite its success, The Phil Silvers Show faced an abrupt end. In its final season, though still garnering good ratings, CBS decided to cancel the series. The motive? They aimed to sell reruns in syndication, a strategy believed to work better for shows not currently in production. This decision left Phil Silvers, the star of the show, deeply upset as the cancellation happened without consulting him. CBS sold the reruns to NBC, and remarkably, they continued to air for 40 years. The unexpected demise of the show sheds light on the complexities of television decisions and the impact on those involved. Terry Carter, the last remaining member of the cast of the 1955 TV series, The Phil Silver Show, stands as a living link to the show's legacy. Carter, who played a notable role in the series, has outlasted his fellow cast members, becoming a unique connection to the bygone era of military humor on television. As the sole survivor, he carries with him the memories and experiences of working alongside Phil Silvers and the rest of the talented ensemble. The longevity of the Phil Silvers show's impact is further underscored by its recognition in 23 by the Radio Times as the top television sitcom, surpassing other classics like Faulty Towers and Seinfeld. This accolade speaks to the enduring appeal and timeless humor embedded in the show's narrative. The series continues to resonate with audiences, transcending the boundaries of its original broadcast era. While the show's cancellation brought disappointment to its star, Phil Silvers, and the abrupt end revealed the intricacies of television decisions, 
The enduring popularity of the Phil Silvers show and syndication has solidified its status as a classic sitcom. Terry Carter's presence as the last surviving cast member serves as a poignant reminder of the camaraderie and laughter that once filled the set, making the Phil Silvers show an indelible part of television history. The unaired pilot of the series, titled Yow Never Get Rich, remained hidden until it surfaced in Nat Hyken's private collection archives. The pilot featured Jack Warden as Corporal Steve Henshaw, a role later taken over by Alan Melvin in the aired pilot, The New Recruits. The storyline centered on Bilko's quest to raise money for a poker game, and Melvin continued in the role throughout the show's run. Interestingly, the U.S. Army serial number displayed for Sergeant Bilko in the opening credits, Raw 15,040,2699, though fictitious, adheres to the correct numbering protocol for the period. It suggests Bilko originally enlisted, and his enlistment was processed by the Service Command for the region covering Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia. Notably, the series underwent a significant change in filming style. Initially shot like a play, with the cast memorizing the entire script, and scenes filmed in one take in front of a studio audience, the approach shifted in the second season. A guest appearance by Mike Todd led to a switch to filming like a movie out of sequence, with multiple takes and no audience. This change proved faster, cheaper, and less demanding for the actors. Audiences of military servicemen then viewed the episodes, with their responses recorded and incorporated into the shows. These behind-the-scenes details add depth to the history of the Phil Silver show, showcasing its evolution from unaired pilots to changes in filming techniques, all contributing to its enduring legacy in television. In its early years, the Phil Silver show had a unique production history. The first three seasons were filmed in the bustling backdrop of New York City, a decision strongly advocated by creator and producer Nat Hyken. However, when Hyken departed from the show, the production saw a significant shift. The operations relocated to the entertainment hub of Los Angeles, California. Notably, the show's impact extended beyond the small screen. On August 11, 2009, the U.S. Postal Service paid homage to early U.S. television programs, including The Phil Silvers Show. In a pane of commemorative postage stamps, Phil Silvers appeared in character as Master Sergeant Ernest G. Bilko. This recognition placed the show alongside other television classics in the early TV memories issue, showcasing its enduring influence. Moreover, the legacy of the Phil Silvers show is not confined to the screen alone. In Coventry, a Phil Silvers museum stands as a testament to the enduring admiration of fans Steve Everett and Mick Clues. Devoted Silver Spilko enthusiasts, they are on a mission to preserve the genius of Phil Silvers and Nat Hyken, ensuring that their contributions to television history remain alive. From the bustling streets of New York to the iconic stamps commemorating its characters, the Phil Silvers show's journey is marked by geographical shifts, national recognition, and the dedicated efforts of fans turned curators. This multifaceted narrative adds depth to the show's history, underscoring its impact on both the cultural landscape and the hearts of its enthusiasts. As we bid adieu to the nostalgia-laden journey we've embarked upon, take a moment to delve into the timeless allure of the small screen gem that has etched itself into the annals of television history. This 1955 marvel, a mosaic of wit and camaraderie, offers more than just a glimpse into the comedic tapestry of its era. It extends an invitation, a beckoning to you, dear reader, to explore the corridors of your own memories and reflections on this televised masterpiece. The Phil Silver Show, with its clever repartee and magnetic ensemble cast, sparks a symphony of recollections in the minds of those who have let its humor seep into the fabric of their lives. It's not merely a series, it's a shared experience, a reservoir of laughter that connects across time and resonates with the human spirit. Perhaps it's the irrepressible charm of Sergeant Bilko, or the infectious camaraderie of the men of Fort Baxter, that has left an indelible mark on your own TV viewing narrative. As we close this chapter, let the echoes of those timeless laughs linger. Share with us your cherished moments, your musings, or even the anecdotes that you've tucked away in the recesses of your memory. The Phil Silver Show is more than a sitcom. It's a cultural touchstone, and your connection to it adds another layer to its enduring legacy. Thank you for joining us on this journey down memory lane for unwrapping the layers of nostalgia that bind us together. Your reflections enrich the tapestry of our shared television history. Until our next rendezvous with the classics, revel in the laughter 
and let the timeless charm of the Phil Silvers show continue to illuminate your days.